The Mr. Beacon Podcast is sponsored by Williot. Scaling IoT with battery-free Bluetooth. So welcome to the Mr. Beacon Podcast. Uh, this week we're in uh, or near Helsinki in Finland uh, at the Cooper Conference. And I'm really pleased to be talking to Antti Jussi. I probably didn't pronounce that exactly right. Maybe you can... Uh, Antti Jussi. Okay, very good. Come on, uh, from Liga, um, uh, can you uh, introduce us to what Liga do? So Liga is the Finnish word for Finnish hockey league. So okay. we're the elite ice hockey series in Finland. And I hear that Finnish people like us like ice hockey. It's pretty popular. It's extremely popular here. You know, by far the most popular sports in, in all demographics here. And how how big is the league? How many teams? How many stadiums? Um, we have 15 teams, 14 stadiums, and um, that's yeah. We've got over two million visitors or spectators in in the past season, or in total. So you, you guys have really led the charge, been incredibly in, innovative about the use of Bluetooth technology and location technology. Can you explain a bit about how you're using it? Yes, yeah, so beginning of next season we will have all the arenas equipped with uh, Koopa locators and then uh, you know every player has a tag and, and the puck has a chip and that, that kind of makes the infrastructure in the arenas and then we have a fancy wise hockey uh, cloud analytics on top of that to you know real, use the real-time positioning on the ice and, and, and all kinds of statistics and insights we can get from the game that it hasn't been available before. So this is great because you know we've uh, on the podcast we've talked a lot about angle of arrival, Bluetooth angle of arrival uh, technology, but you're using it for uh, an application where you probably don't care a huge amount about the the physics and the and, and the technology. What is it that that uh, Cooper those Cooper locators do? For, uh, for ice hockey that, uh, that, that is particularly important? Um, well, they, you know, as every player has a tag and we have the puck there, the Koopa locators, and they, well, you know, they track the players and the puck a uh, hundred times a second and that way we can get very, very accurate and precise coordinate data that we then, the raw data we use then to, you know, make all kinds of analytics on, on the player positions and speed of the puck and, and position of the puck and, and all kinds of stuff. So it's that's the key of actually doing that, all the cool stuff. And what kind of statistics does that yield? What does a viewer, uh, presumably this is available through which channels? How does uh, how does a fan see this information? Uh, well, we, we can use it in the arena, in uh, you know, on the Jumbotron to show the statistics for the fans. We have, some teams have applications where we can show some of the data on our Liga website and digital channels, a TV broadcast you know, show the data in there in period analysis and replays and highlight clips. So there's a lot of use cases for for the fan experience, and you know, really sky's the limit for the um, insights and the stats we can get from really basic shots on on goal to you know, very very deep. Uh, analysis of the flow of the game and the performance of each of the teams. So it's from you know from zero to hundred, I guess. And uh, how many? D- tell us a little bit more about the infrastructure. So you've got a bunch of these locators. They look like small white frisbees with blinking lights. Uh, h- how many of those does it take to cover an uh, ice hockey uh, rink? Yeah, it's rink. Yeah. Uh, Twenty locators and per each arena and they're in the in the ceiling of the arena covering the whole rink going around the rink and uh, they communicate to some kind of local server presumably which is doing all of the calculation and uh, when do you get to see the data it's displayed in is it displayed in real time it's displayed in real time yes so you kind of have a digital view of where the the, the puck is and where the players are which I mean, I am not a big ice hockey fan, I am ashamed to admit to you, but uh, um, I, you were showing some screenshots of the television coverage and how that's presented, and uh, 
I have to say I found it, I found it really useful because um, otherwise it's just difficult to track where everyone is and you have that kind of like a heads up display and you can see all of that. What, what kind of feedback have you had from your different stakeholders? What do they like about it? Well, feedback is really positive. I mean, everyone looks at it from their own perspective. So we have teams and coaches who really want the analysis of the game and, and per, you know, as much data as possible from the players and their team and their opponents. But then for the fans, it's more about the visualization. I mean, we have so much data that we need to think about how to present that. And mm -hmm. we can't really overload people with... with some people really like statistics, they want the numbers and they want a lot of tables and they can read all day, but you know, normal fan wants to, you know, easily digestible piece of information and that's that's really what maybe is our biggest challenge, how we feed that to the to the fans so that they get a lot of added value, but it's you know overwhelming in, in, in you know in terms of amount of data. Uh, I think you guys have really pioneered this space. I, I'm not aware of any other sports league that has done exactly what you're doing now. Is, is that the case? Um, that is the case, yeah. I mean, some of the football leagues and some of the major leagues in, in, in the States have done, like NFL, have done, done some chip-based tracking. But, you know, hockey is a different game because the puck is really small and it travels extremely fast. So it's a different game than, than football or, um, or any other kind of a slower sport where the ball is bigger and, and you can use optical tracking as well. But I mean, for, for the hockey, we're the, we're the first to actually achieve this. NHL has a lot of talks about it, but you know, we haven't seen anything yet. I, I can't imagine how a Bluetooth beacon survives in a puck that is being slammed really hard, going at incredible velocities. But I mean, do these things do these things break, or what are some of the what are some of the challenges with making all of this work? Well, that has been the challenge, but none of the pucks you know broke down last season, so they're extremely durable. And the wise hockey guys who you know provide the solution for us. They made an extremely great job with the puck because that's their their um, proprietary puck that they provide for us. There's a chip in the puck, and it has to, you know, it has to survive, you know, a shot on the goalpost 100 miles an hour, mm -hmm. you know, the whole whole night. And that's none of the pucks have broken down, so it's extremely that's good. Impressive. But that, that's that's uh, that has been the biggest challenge, I guess, for you know, thinking about how to get the chip in the puck and make it survive. Of course, it's a physical game, so players bump into each other quite a lot as well. So, you know, the tax on the players has to be durable as well. But, you know, so far everything's gone very well. And, and how about the players? Do they, uh, how do they feel about being tracked? Um, well, some players like it a lot, some players maybe not that much, and most of them probably don't even care that much. Right. I mean, they know that this is part of the being part of the entertainment product that the league is, and, and they, I mean, you know, there might be some questions in the future when this is more um, more advanced system and we can provide a lot of data to different parties and there might be questions from players how we're using it and of course we need to make sure that players association is aware of that and we have a good you know good relationship with them and, and with the players but but um, I think most of them don't really even they know they have a chip but that doesn't really bother them at all. So one of the challenges of going first and pioneering is you need to convince the skeptics you know, within your own organization. Presumably, some people thought it was a great idea, others must have had some reservations. How do you, how do you make that case to an organization that probably doesn't see radio technology as being its core business? I know, and that's... Uh, when we show this to the teams and we show the board of directors of Liga, of course, we talk about the value, the business value and commercial value that we can get out of this system. We don't talk about the technology that much. So mm -hmm. far. Of course, they need to know a little bit about that. But, you know, it's that's why we did a pilot of, of four arenas to validate the system and show the value that this actually works. And mm -hmm. this is how we can use this. Uh, teams can use it for, for commercial purposes. They get new opportunities for their partners and their sponsors 
that's the same for the Liga, and we can you know, save money on you know, doing statistics automatically in the future. We can provide more data to coaches and players. So there's, a, there's so many use cases for this, and we, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a big investment for us as, as a league, but um, yeah, there was a lot of change management still probably when, when we want every, every team to be in, in part of this. Yeah. And so part of this is putting infrastructure into Stadia. Um, you mentioned, I think, 14. Uh, presumably you don't, the league, does the league own the stadium or, or do, are there separate entities that own the, the infrastructure? Yeah, they, they, are, they are separate entities. Uh, it depends. It might be the city that owns, owns the stadium. Um, usually the team is the main um, you know, occupant of, of that rink and they have a lot of saying what to put there but yeah I mean we have a lot of broadcasting infrastructure in place in the mm -hmm. arenas as well so so I mean that's just you know putting a few locators in the ceiling so that hasn't been a problem at all it's if you play in the in the league you you need to have this in your arenas that's kind of how it is. Uh, what would you say the biggest challenge has been in getting this project done well I I would say now the biggest challenge has been the buy-in to actually expand this league-wide what mm -hmm. we did because it's a uh, said it's a huge investment for us although we have good resources but it's, it's still something that we wouldn't do this big investments every year and now it's a five-year deal with with wise hockey so it's more about getting the buy-in from the teams and the board of directors and you know justify the investment that we, we can actually make a positive business case out of this so and not, how not technology it's more about justifying that and how do you go about that? That's, I mean, uh, you've sort of answered it already, but I'd love to hear uh, anything else that you can share on selling that because I think the whole industry is filled with great ideas that never go anywhere. And uh, is it just a spreadsheet where you kind of add up the revenue or? Well, for, for some people, that's, that's the answer. So we just need to show numbers and we probably you know, hopefully we show green numbers there yeah. and, and pluses in, in there. but you know some people want to know more and they want to know that wise hockey is the system that should go I mean this is where the sports is going everyone knows that we're you know this is how we're evolving and but now what technology actually is to put your money on and what to invest on that that's maybe the biggest question that then the you know if this is something that we should do everyone knows we should do this but are we now you know betting on the right horse I guess. and any any lessons learned any benefits that you weren't anticipating that you've uh, got out of using this technology well i think we're first started from the only from the fan perspective and and, and the media perspective but once you know the system got better and better and the algorithms get more intelligent we, we saw the kind of the coaching side and the team management side and, and so, I mean then it started to make sense because it's the fan engagement the media and, and betting that's probably where the money is and that's what you know pays the bills but you know the coaching side we know that teams spend a lot of money on, on all kinds of coaching tools and, and some of them are not that valuable and now we can provide the whole league every team in the league we can kind of not level the playing field, but at least give a, the same data set for all the teams to, you know, and they can use it however they want to gain competitive advances, I guess. Well, it's wonderful. I am really fascinating to, to hear about your application of this technology. It's always good to hear from end users and congratulations on, on being the first in doing this. Thank you for looking forward to next season. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. All right. three songs you'd take on a trip to Mars any uh, are you do you enjoy music I do I do I'm a you know, semi-professional musician myself oh I really do, I do play a, fantastic a guitar what do you play guitar yeah, guitar yes All right. I, I enjoy that I'm a, I'm a rock guy so I think there's a I guess you know I think three songs I didn't really think about it, but you know I think Stairway to Heaven would be the first one I mean that's an obvious choice here classic classic and then you know for the naming right I would say 
this uh, song called The Skies in Neighborhood by Foo Fighters. Okay. Kind of in, in the name ways. And then um, my all time favorite song is Green Day's Basket Case, so I could listen to that you know, all right. day in, day out. So that would be my third one. Does it have like a memory associated with it, or do you just like the song? Well, there's of course a lot of you know memories growing up listening to that song and, and the whole record, but also, yeah, I, I like the song, it's, it's, a, it's a great song. <laughs> 